Oh, we're on now. <laughs> awesome way to start a show, by the way. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Ben on Beer Show for July the 3rd, 2012. I am Ben Rayberg, and with me here is Donovan Adkisson. That is me. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, working on our professionalism today. Yes, we are. <laughs> This is the first show, so bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, start the show off. Um, what's the last beer you had, Donovan? The last beer that I had was... Except that one you just chugged right outside oh, five minutes ago. I can't... Damn it. It would be something that I'd never had before, and that was a Guinness Black Lager. It's always good to try something you've never had. Yes, yes, because as as you already know... I'm a light drinker when it comes to beer, and what I mean by that is I drink the cheap crap. Hey, <laughs> I'm not going to fault anybody for it, but we're, we're here to encourage craft beer yes. and the enjoyment of it and the knowledge of it. Yes. So, camera's on me? Cram camera's on me. Well, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're here to uh, do the first show, and I'm here to get comfortable with the camera podcasting filling dead space and not having pauses and all that. Mm -hmm. We're here to work on... We're here to work well, on I'm that. I'm here to work on that. Donovan's more of a professional than I am at this uh, media stuff. That's, Boy, that's not saying much. That's why I'm here in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I drank was a 22-ounce bomber uh, of, well, it's this size, of mm -hmm. Beer de Mars from uh, New Belgium Brewing. It's part of their Lips of Faith series. And uh, there's one in the fridge right here, but I, I didn't bring my whole stash. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. What the hell does lips of faith mean? Lips of faith? You have to have faith in the beer, in the brewer, before you touch your lips to that okay. bottle <clears throat> and trust that it is good because it is not ordinary. Okay. Okay. I think that's... I never read what that was. That's my guess. <laughs> your lips must have faith, but... So you just pulled that out of your ass. Your faith will be well-founded. Oh, okay. Okay. I was curious. I well, was curious. When you have something like, in that series, there's Coca Mole, um, Beer de Mars, there's, um, what's the other one? There's a Belgo IPA, and mm -hmm. it's, it's, all, it's all got spices in it, but the Coca Mole is what I wanted to find above everything in the series because it's made with um, cocoa and chili peppers. I forget what Cocoa. type of chili, but it's chocolate and chilies. So, okay, that'll be interesting <clears throat> for will. sure. It does not taste like anything else. It's. I'm not even sure if they um, uh, brew it with hops. I, I I really don't know if they add hops to it. It well, could be just those spices and chilies. It it'll definitely be the most unusual beer I have ever tried. Well, I had one during a, a South Geek show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the show where suddenly Ben was no longer there. Okay. Uh, nope. No, that was a couple of weeks before that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Today we are going to review uh, Arrogant Bastard Ale from Stone Brewing. Hell of a name. Yes. Hell of a beer, by the way. I have had this once, but it was an older. It wasn't as fresh as this one. No, it was at least I. five years old, probably. Mm-hmm. We'll also take you through a high-level overview of, of my interpretation and my understanding of the brewing process. Um, and if anybody's in the chat or on email or if you hear this five years from this taping <laughs> and want to argue about it, l let me know. If I'm wrong, I will readily admit it. Um, but Ben is never wrong, so just, <laughs> just put that out there. I'm not, I'm not the Walt. Okay. <laughs> Let's get that one straight. Okay. <laughs> Arrogant Bastard, also known as The Walt. No, we can't do him that way. No. Uh, then we'll do the news that I found interesting, and not it's not the month's news, but it's um, relatively recent news and just a couple of stories. And um, uh, we'll may maybe cover a couple of events that I've heard of around the States or um, anywhere else, and then we'll uh, wrap it up and get out of here. Cool. We'll try to keep it interesting. Uh, I'll try not to rant too much, but we'll see how that goes. 
All right, so what is the first thing we're going to do? Um, we're going to drink beer. Drink beer. Okay. That would be good because I'm thirsty. I am too. All this talking. <laughs> I'm not used to this. I know, right? Is this on camera? Uh, yes, it is. This is a 22-ounce bomber of Arrogant Bastard Ale. It is uh, classified, I suppose, as an American strong ale. It's very strong. Very strong. Um, and I, I want to read the text from the bottle uh, because okay. it's really what sold me on the beer. Um, I'm the kind of person you, you can't you can't tell me I can't do something. <laughs> if you tell me that I'm I'm not good to do or I'm not I'm not worthy. Yeah. Uh, I'm not allowed. You are I'm, not worthy. I'm, I want to do whatever that is you tell me I'm not supposed to do. Um. The bottle text uh, defines arrogance as the act or quality of being arrogant, haughty, undue assumption, or overbearing conceit. Hmm. Kind of sounds like Walt. <laughs> I'm he's, joking. He's going to hate us. <laughs> <laughs> this is an aggressive ale. You probably won't like it. It is quite doubtful that you have the taste or sophistication to be able to appreciate an ale of this quality and depth. I'm scared. We would suggest that you stick to safer and more familiar territory. Maybe something with a multi-million dollar ad campaign. <laughs> aimed at convincing you that it's made in a little brewery. Or, that one, or one that implies that their tasteless, lizzy yellow beverage will give you more sex appeal. <laughs> Perhaps you think multi-million dollar ad campaigns make things taste better. They don't? <laughs> Perhaps you're mouthing your words as you read this. <laughs> At Stone Brewing, we believe that pandering to the lowest common denominator represents the height of tyranny, a virtual form of keeping the consumer barefoot and stupid. Wait, wait. Where are they going with this? <laughs> These Californians. They're wow. talking about South Georgia. God, this is right starting where we. I walked here. I mean, I didn't. I walked from the car to the studio tonight. Yeah, barefoot. Yeah, you did. I saw that. I am no longer barefoot, but I was. I was concerned. That's anyway. Brought forth upon an unsuspecting public in 1997. So they started brewing Arrogant Bastard in 1997. Hmm. Or they released this recipe anyway. Mm -hmm. Arrogant Bastard Ale openly challenged the, the tyrannical overlords who. <laughs> Sorry, this sounds, it's beginning to sound like a, a movie preview or something. <laughs> Tyrannical overlords. Overlords. <laughs> or a video game, rather. Uh, who are brazenly attempting to keep Americans chained in the shackles of poor taste. Mm. As the progenitor of its style, Arrogant Bastard Ale has reveled in its unprecedented and uncompromising celebration of intensity. There have been many nods to Arrogant Bastard Ale even outright attempts to copy it. But no one can ever embody the true nature of liquid arrogance. So, <clears throat> liquid. immediately I put it in the cart. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you can't fool me. Come on. That's just silly talk. Yeah, just silly talk. Silly talk. Oh, they were right. It, it's, a, it's a beast. <laughs> And this isn't a review. I guess it's it's just a tasting and a, and a reminder that I'm not worthy. <laughs> well, if you've never read the bottle, it says right there on the bottle. I mean, can yeah, can we read that? Yeah, it's it. Uh, yeah, can we clear? Yeah, it's pretty clear. You are not worthy. You are not worthy. So, um, I read a book one time, and uh, I didn't finish it. It's called Tasting Beer by <laughs> Randy Mosh. Okay. Is that right? I was wondering where we were going Randy with this. Randy Mosher. See, this wasn't in the notes. I'm, this is... Hey, flying anyway, by the seat of your pants. Uh, he suggests pouring a beer straight to the bottom of, the, of an upright, very clean glass. Really? Now, this is for... <laughs> if you saw one of the most recent posts that been on beer, I, I poured the uh, somersault or the blue paddle. Damn Blue thing! Paddle. Damn thing had a head on it like that. That's why you do it. You get it for good foam, and that foam, as it fizzes and um, releases the flavor, mm -hmm. that you really get the aroma from that more so than 
you know, tipping your bottle in. But that's so the way I the, that's the way I pour because I want more liquid and less foam. Well, he's just saying that you should have patience. Well, I should be I should be pouring because this is going to be a while. <laughs> he's saying you should have more patience, and you'll actually get more enjoyment out of it. Plus, this foam will help the 11 ounces per glass fill up the 12 ounce glass. Oh, okay. See, I, I guess I've always been one of those that I, I do not like to foam the beer. I've, I have, um... Because I'm not patient. I don't stop. I, I mean, I don't wait for the foam to, to die down a little before that's I... That's the first sign of alcoholism. What? I oh. can't wait. I can't wait that long. <laughs> but this helps in your <clears throat> finding your center. Oh, okay. See, and then you watch it and you go... I have yet to pour one of these um, American lagers mm-hmm. like this to see if they have this kind of mm-hmm. like twenty minute head retention. You got to wait twenty minutes no, to drink. No, you don't beer. have to wait twenty minutes to drink. You could drink it now. It's all it's settled, but you can see that it's just installed. Yeah, there. It's not fizzing and going away. It's it's there. That says a lot for the quality of the malt. Mm-hmm. The um, the the process that they took it through, especially during the mash, and that's that's where you get the head retention and body of the beer. Uh, I'm going to talk about that and okay. when we go over the brewing process. Okay. Um, of course, not at length because I am no expert. Um, but I guess with that, I'm going to give you the the one with less in it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I hear you. All right. Because I am going to have a nap after we <laughs> finish. But um, I know smelling beer is a lot like smelling wine. They tell you, you know, you get the little bit in the glass, and, and you're supposed to just shove your nose in the glass and, and sift it around. And you're supposed to just go ahead and dip your nose in it. Oh, I, 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 I mean, I'm not saying you get foam <laughs> on your schnoz, but... You know, that actually, to me now, I know you're going to describe it a little differently because you have all of these down I don't t- have these words. That is... I I mean, you could try to pick stuff out, like chocolate, oak. Well, you know what the first thing that hits me? What's that? Sweet. It, it, it's, it's got sweet. a sweetness to it. Yeah. And the hops, it's got some kind of aromatic hops. If you look on Stone Brewing's website at Arrogant Bastard and about the beer, mm-hmm. it'll tell you, you know... Well, most websites or most beer websites will tell you it uses these hops and these malts. And um, it doesn't give you a recipe, but it tells you basically what to expect when you're tasting mm-hmm. the beer. Mm-hmm. This says hops, colon, uh, there I go, lost my word. And this isn't in my notes either. It's, <laughs> um, what's the word for keeping it secret? <laughs> Come on, you know that word. Dot dot dot. <laughs> it's eleven other herbs and spices. Anyway, Cla- classified. Classified. Uh, the type of hops they use in arrogant bastards. It's classified. classified. I'm not sure. It's like top secret or anything. They're just not going to publish it. Right, right. Because once again, <laughs> the chat room was trying to help worthy. us. Top Did we get it? Se- top secret, undisclosed. Oh, classified. Yes. That's the word on the website. Okay, classified. It all means the same. All right. I'm not going to tell you. It's a secret. It's a secret. I think they handed it to the Masons to keep. That is one hell of a good smell. That's wonderful. I used to never like this this strong beers, any micro brews, because, mm-hmm. well, you know, I was brought up on Bud Light, and Coors <laughs> yeah. Light, Miller, whatever we, you know, whatever we could get the, the old guy down the street to buy for Old us. Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Found a six-pack of that one time. <laughs> I had to do my duty and drink it. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy. What the hell was I thinking? Hey, we've all been there. <clears throat> well, you know. I, I have I have been so uh, to that point where I went to a local place in Fitzgerald, and I cannot remember the name of the place, but it's like a little hole in the wall. Mm-hmm. And you buy it. Everything's and, a hole in the wall in Fitzgerald. Well, yeah, way. that's true. But uh, you it's either a hole in the wall or a hole in the Walmart. 
Anyway, you buy it in gallon jugs. And literally, it came out in the standard gallon jug that milk would come in. And this was beer? This was beer. It was like, now this would have been in 1992, 93. Wow. Yeah, and we could get it, and it was like $5 a gallon. I'm not saying it was good beer. Well, I'm not saying it was regulated either. Probably not, but it was a, yeah. I'd have bought it. You could roll up, and I mean, you didn't even have to go in. You just rolled up to the door, and <laughs> he came. the drive through He came stores. out, and he's like, what you need? I need a gallon of beer. Come out with a gallon of beer. <laughs> I don't even know if the place is still open. <clears throat> uh, they probably got shut down by the. He'd been there years and years Secretary and years. Secretary of State. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's time to uh, taste it. See, it, no time at all. Just a little chat, and it's settled and ready. I'll take your word for now it. Now let's taste it. Any special way? <laughs> Through the lips. <laughs> it just creeps in the corners of your mouth and just tries to chew on the back of your tongue. It's crazy. I can tell you this. There's a lot of hops in it. <clears throat> Fresh is better than five years old. Oh, it's a lot different than uh, the other bottle. Huh? Yeah, the other one was flat. Oh, well. Yeah. This right happens. here actually has more. Okay, so the hops is what gives it the bitterness. Bitterness, yes. Okay. I definitely taste that. Uh, that hits me on the back of yeah, the tongue. This is, uh, wow. I mean, I'm not saying it's like an IPA, but it's bitter. Yeah. I like it. It actually hit me in the jaws mm-hmm. right here. And... Yep. Hmm. Here, Bella Kawhi. Can you hear this? <laughs> and, mm. I, and I really have no other words. Um, the hops overpower a whole lot of of uh, of the body in it, and it's not that it's is. not balanced. I mean, there's obviously an aftertaste. Mm-hmm. My breath is probably atrocious right now. <laughs> Don't, I mean, go, it's just, don't go kiss your wife right now. <laughs> well, it's just, um, it's wonderful. It's it's a damn good flavor. It's a kick in the pants. <clears throat> I can tell you, as someone who does drink a lot of cheap-ass beer, Ice House, Michelob Ultra. Now, Michelob Ultra is basically like drinking natural light or water. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ice House is bitter. It seems to have... You know, a lot of hops, I guess, if I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. But <clears throat> all of those definitely pale in comparison to something like this. Well, in comparison to Bud Light, I always use them as a scapegoat. Mm-hmm. In comparison to the Lizzie Yellow water, they say? Beverage. Lizzie Yellow beverages. This is um, like chewing on a dandelion. That's mm-hmm. just bitter. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> it. It is quite aromatic too, but it, the hops are not, um, not on the nose as much as they are in the, on the tongue. I know what this reminds me of. Blue Moon. Really? Yeah, the sweetness, just just the the the, the initial hit. Yeah, I could see that. It doesn't taste like it. This, you know, behind my molars, uh, the Blue Moon does not Mm. do that. No, 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 no. No, that's the reason why I'm saying it's not quite, but this one hits me in the, yeah, I feel like someone's drilling into my jaws. I can see that, the sweetness and even some of the bitter, uh, but Blue Moon's a Belgian white, and this is, I mean, it's a completely different style, but yeah, I can see what you're talking about. It it is still sweet. Um, Is it Blue Moon? It's got the, uh, like, orange and coriander. Mm Mm-hmm. Or is that just shock top? Not well, sure. I know, I know that uh, the Blue Moon talks about that it's best served with us with a uh, an orange wedge. Yeah, the Chili's gave me an orange wedge, like stuck it in my beer. The the best thing they had on tap apparently was Blue Moon, and she just gave me a. Well, don't put it in the damn beer. Put it on the side of the glass. I just got the beer off of it and gave it to my kid. (laughs) I don't need an orange wedge with the beer. I like the chat room. Blue Moon is a Belgian white. How do you just rattle off this stuff? (laughs) 
That's because Ben is the man. I'm not quite the man. I mean, I had to look up the style that Arrogant Bastard was. I mean, obviously it's an, sorry, obviously it's an ale, but I was like, what kind of ale is You're this? Not kicking the stand, I just right? did, yeah. <laughs> sorry, folks. I'm making make you dizzy. That's what the chat room was talking about earlier, I guess, was shaky camera. That's all right. <laughs> I'll keep my feet to myself. Playing footy with the with the crowd. I know. All right, we're just going to move on because I, 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 I'm at a loss for words on, well, on what's what would here. you What would you eat with this? Steak. That's what I was thinking. I think it probably pairs well with steak and grilled pork. Mm-hmm. I'm not a pairing expert. I haven't gotten to that part in tasting beer yet. Um, <laughs> Makes me want a hamburger for sure. Uh, but yeah, I really can't say exactly what this would. The sweetness might go well with um, Italian dishes, mm, with a yeah. spicy marinara. Um, not, if, <laughs> not so much the uh, cream-based sauces, but yeah. tomato-based sauces. Well, of course, if anybody that's watching this or listening to this has any ideas, they can always uh, any suggestions. Yeah, what um, what a good pairing for this would be would be awesome. Um, typically, I pair this with um, water afterwards. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just because of the bitterness <laughs> and a, a burger, probably I'll have after this. <laughs> I think I'll go have some vodka. I would not have chicken. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do chicken. Uh, no, no, no chicken. <laughs> no chicken. This is going pretty well for our first show. Yeah, not bad. It'll, it'll be doing even better by the time I get to the end of this. We'll glass. have our words coming right out. Mm-hmm. When, when this gets down, this will be emptying as well. <clears throat> All right, so what are we, what are we up, up to now? Um, we are going to have our brewing topic. Oh, okay. And um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do with this. And if there's any more um, people who have brewed more than I have, which is quite a few people. I mean, my motorcycle mechanic has brewed way more than I have. <laughs> Your motorcycle mechanic. Okay. <laughs> well, I can tell like you this. this. I can tell you this. You've brewed more than I have because I've um, brewed well, zero. <laughs> um, I will go ahead and... and um, I can't stay away from this. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to limit. <laughs> okay. I will say that I have never um, brewed in the manner I'm about to describe. Okay. But I have read about it. I just don't. <laughs> I don't have the money for the equipment, and I want to do it right. I don't want to do it like partial. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and get all the the equipment I need to do it exactly how I want to because I have messed up too many batches of beer because I, I, was, That's almost I was trying to half-ass the process or <laughs> do with what I, you know, had at the time. But You know, that's probably a crime in some states. Probably. Not in Alabama. Well, it's not a crime in Alabama because you can't do it in Alabama. Homebrewing is illegal in Alabama, last I heard. <sighs> You poor Alabamians. We'll get to that rant in a little bit. <clears throat> um, yeah. And that's really all I have for that one. I, but, um, okay. Beer is made from water, as you might guess. Mm. Mm-hmm. Malted barley. What is barley? Barley is a grain. Okay, it's That a they grain. grow in the United States. Okay. Um, and apparently in Mesopotamia a long time ago. <laughs> <clears throat> um, hops and yeast. That's it. That's it. To make beer, that's all you need. And, of course, I, again, I'm saying this from my perspective, from my mm-hmm. limited knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all you need to make beer. Water, malted barley, Yeast and hops. Okay, so I know what the hops does. The hops is the bitter. Mm-hmm. What does the barley do? The malted barley, when it germinates and barely starts to grow, basically, mm-hmm. it's dried and crushed. That germination creates a natural sugar. That's where we get our sugar. In the mash, the mashing process is basically the first process, um, and there's a whole lot of prep work 
to be done, but that's not part of what I'm going to talk about. The okay. mashing process is where the barley and other fermentables that you want are um, soaked, if you will, in in uh, hot water. That's about I don't know 159 degrees. There's some exacting okay. temperatures there that you know I don't know. In a device called a mash tun, and it's basically a big insulated um, cooler for the home brewer, anyways. And it's right. an insulated cooler that maintains a temperature, and that is um, mashed for about an hour or so. And those sugars release into the water. Just just an hour or so. About an hour, yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's already it's prepped grain basically that you that you get from the the brewing supply or oh so we're not we're not necessarily talking about the process as an actual no you're not pulling out of the dirt okay no. okay we're talking about some some stuff this that's is, already this is ready to mash okay this is okay. this is uh um crushed grain okay so um it's mashed the sugars release and it is drained from the mash tun into a big pot okay. now this is like multi-barrel pots in in, mm-hmm. in in huge boilers in commercial brewing. But for the home brewer, it's about a 10-gallon pot. Uh, 5, 10, sometimes they do a 15-gallon batch. just depends on what equipment you have and, and how much money you have. Wow, gallons. Okay. We're in gallons, yeah. Um, so once that the sugars have been released, the process of separating or draining off the water... Mm -hmm. which is now called wort, W-O-R-T. Wort. Wort. Okay. It's kind of funny to say. I know, eh, wort. Wort. I got the wort ready. (laughs) Um, That process of separating the grain from the wort is, or the grain from the water, is called laudering. L-A-U-T-E-R-I-N-G. Okay. Laudering. Not anything like laudering, but okay. (laughs) You should not laudering. Laudering. That's basically draining your mash tun and your wort into the brew kettle. Okay. Um, at that point, there's different ways to to handle this, is to put more hot water <laughs> on your grain bed again, mm-hmm. further extract the sugars and drain it until you get it, it drained all out into your brew kettle, enough you know, um, liquid to make a batch. Or you could... Have that first lauder, and then add water. But basically, you're you're uh, okay. draining your bed and adding water to make your your batch of beer. And so a batch could be, I mean, you, you do it in what five gallon batches, ten, yeah. fifteen, five gallon, five gallon, five gallon. I'm when I do graduate to my new set of equipment, I will do ten gallon batches. Okay. Um. And at that point, we, we do the boil. The, the process is the boil. Mm-hmm. Um, hops are added. Uh, any other spices are added. But typically, you know, with our four-ingredient brewing, the hops are added mm-hmm. because these, um, the wort has, has drained off such a sweet concoction. It's just too sweet. Too sweet. We have to counter that sweetness with, with something hops. bitter, which is... Apparently, the best thing for that is hops. Now, <laughs> hops acts as a bittering agent and also a preservative. So that's one good thing. Mm, about, okay. That's one benefit of using hops over any other thing. Mm-hmm. They have some kind of, of uh, preservative property to them. Okay. Um, the boil lasts about an hour. Um, it could go... More than an hour. If you've ever noticed, Dogfish Head has uh, Dogfish Head Brewing from Milton, Delaware. I was about to say what. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, Sam Caligioni founded Dogfish Head Craft Brewing. Dogfish uh, Head. Dogfish. I don't ask me where he got the name, but okay. Awesome stuff coming out of there. He's he's testing the limits everywhere. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, they make an IPA. Which is, uh, they've got a 60-minute IPA, which means that went through a 60-minute boil. Then they have a 90-minute IPA, where they boiled that for 90 minutes and probably 
continually added hops through mm-hmm. that process. And something I've never seen before but heard about is a 120-minute IPA, where they did a full two-hour boil, and it's apparently very good. Um, but it's something like eight bucks for four ounces or something like that. It's kind of pricey. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And the I think a friend of mine had it in the a bar somewhere, and he paid about that. Um, so it could have been the bar or whatever, but I've never seen it. It comes in a wine bottle. <clears throat> that, wow. Very okay. special. W- one question from the chat room. IPA. Ah, IPA is India Pale Ale. India. Yeah. It's, um, it was made for some, uh, some royalty back in some time. Mm. <laughs> I want to say the early 1800s. In India. Not in India. Not in India. In Britain. In Britain. <laughs> Okay. My my thinking, I've never read to confirm this, but my thinking was that I, I just said hops is a preservative. Mm-hmm. Now, IPA is known for its being absolutely bitter. Lots and lots of hops. It's a really hoppy beer. So my thinking was they added so much hops to preserve, to it. preserve it for the trip to India, but I've never read that anywhere. That would make sense, though. So, yeah, an overly hopped beer yeah. kept local and called Indian. I don't know. <laughs> that makes sense to me. So um, it was made for royalty, and um, and American brewers have had so much fun with it. They've, I imagine. They've added stuff to it and, and made it, and they made double IPA, and, oh, it's just wonderful. Wow. I want I want that. <laughs> There's one in the fridge here. Stay out of the fridge. There's a Georgian uh, IPA <laughs> right there in the fridge. Um, All right, so 100, 120 minute. 120 minute boil. Mm-hmm. That's um, typically longer than any home brewer is going to ever mess with. Um, yeah, I really did some good equipment. I really didn't know, know how long doing. you actually brewed this stuff. 60 minutes is the norm. Okay. And, um, and it depends on the recipe. The recipe will tell you mm-hmm. um, when to add hops and what kind of hops. And of course, you can make up your own recipes. Um, but hops are added during different times of the boil or just once or whatever. Right. Um, next in my notes is a hot break. Now, the hot break is the process of cooling the wort, the boiling wort, cooling that down. It's fast as possible to about 68 degrees from 212, 215 to 68 as quickly as possible. Okay, so this was after the boil. Yeah. At, All right, at so the 60-minute point, you turn off the burners, and you you need to cool that wort down Okay. as quickly as possible. And how do you this, do that? This does two things. Oh, well, okay. You do it with um, well, what's called a wort chiller. Um, <laughs> come on. Oh, why didn't I know this? <laughs> Why did I not know this? <laughs> um, a, a typical wart chiller. There's some super duper models um, that that do all kinds of crazy stuff. But the one that most uh, home brewers have is a huge copper pipe uh, w- roll. Mm-hmm. I guess it's about as tall as the brew kettle is, mm-hmm. and they run cold water through it. Okay. So the last few minutes of the boil, you just dip this thing in without water running through it to mm-hmm. boil it and um, sanitize it, gotcha. sterilize it, rather. Yep. And then you turn off the burners, turn on the cold water, and the amount of surface on that on that copper tube mm-hmm. will chill that wart down very quickly. In a matter of five minutes, it's gone 200 degrees. Wow. Down, well, not 200 degrees, but so from you, so boiling you to... 60s. 60s. Know, okay. 70s, 60s. Um, the reason you need to cool it as fast as possible is if you leave it out to cool by itself, mm-hmm. that gives things time to land in it and foster and start to grow. Oh. Yeah, because you're not, I mean, I'm at my house, I'm brewing across the yard from the sheep. <laughs> I don't want anything from the sheep to have time to sit on top of the beer while it's cooling and get comfortable in my beer. This, yeah. So it gives time micro for or, microorganisms to start to get right. funky with the right. beer. Okay. The, the faster you cool it, the less time it, <clears throat> that you have that 
uh, um, that cooled wart exposed. Right. Le- you, you lessen the chances of any type of contamination. Anything that touches it uh, after, below 180 degrees, mm-hmm. give or take, needs to be sanitized. Gotcha. Anything that touches the beer. Any hose, any spoon, any fingers, uh, wow. anything. Okay. You can't stand. You can't sanitize your fingers. By the way, don't just don't touch the beer. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> yeah, don't don't put your fingers in anything boiling, please. <laughs> so, the um, so we've gone through the mashing to get our sugars. We've done the boil. We've uh, added hops. Yep. So we have a we got the sugary. We have a sugary substance that is has been bittered down. Mm-hmm. Now we have it at about 68 degrees, which mm-hmm. is perfect time to pitch the yeast. And pitching the yeast is simply putting the yeast in the wort. That's really. I thought you it. stood back a few feet and just went <laughs> like that. I don't know why they call it pitching. Well, of course, if you're a commercial brewer, you probably are throwing it. <laughs> the surface. <laughs> over which you are throwing this yeast, you're pitching. you are pitching it. <laughs> and you're trying to get it even and not clumped. And if it's dry yeast, it needs to be, you know, you shake it up and so it kind of sits as a surface. And yeah. Most, most of the time we just use liquid yeast. Liquid yeast. <laughs> yeah, liquid yeast. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> right on. <clears throat> I have actually never used um, liquid yeast. And there's there's a million other things that can be done to change the process to to um, cultivate your own yeast mm-hmm. uh, to prepare your liquid yeast like three days in advance. Right. You can crush your own grain. You can add different spices. You can uh, you can grow your own hops. You can really go back to nature if you want to. You can go as close to uh, old times. As you can get, um, that's. I probably will never grow my own grains. I don't think I would either. I do want to grow my own hops. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Why not? Hmm. It's a flower. I got plenty of dandelions in the yard. <laughs> we can. Can we use those? I'm not sure dandelions are edible. <laughs> sure they are. <laughs> After you boil them for 120 minutes. <laughs> Uh, I guess I better tell you guys not to do that. Yeah, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I have racking in here, but that's basically the process of moving your uh, beer into a secondary mm. fermenter. But well, I guess I should talk about fermentation. You pitch the yeast to a sixty-eight degree container of wort, and the yeast wakes up and goes, there's sugar. That's what I eat. And so the byproduct of the yeast um, consuming the sugar is alcohol. Kind so of a, we're, kind of the whole point. Okay, so why we're, beer is illegal, the yeast did it, <laughs> not me. <laughs> we're, we're literally drinking the yeast. excrement of yeast. You know what? Cheers. There's other things that come off of yeast as it consumes the sugar, but I'm not going to go into all that. <laughs> it's chemicals whose names I cannot remember at this point. <laughs> I know, but if you think about that, the excrement of yeast. All right. <laughs> this is great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we let it sit in the dark. For about two weeks. Two ten, weeks? Ten to fourteen days. Two weeks? I can't drink it that day? Oh, uh, you, you you, should have made some two weeks ago. No. Oh. <laughs> then you'd have something to drink. I'm always a poor planner. Mm. After, uh, after the fermentation is complete, some mm-hmm. people do uh, one week in that bucket, in that first fermenter, and then they move it to... A secondary fermenter um, when you have uh, let it sit for a week mm-hmm. a lot of that yeast and the, and the sugars and whatever is left in the wort will settle to the bottom you'll have this cake at the bottom okay not a birthday cake uh, it is full of vitamin B 
Hey. So don't be afraid to drink it if there's a little bit of, of sediment in the bottom of your homebrew bottle. Just, it, it's just good for it. you. Good for you. Um, and so some people move that to a different uh, fermentation vessel, mm -hmm. typically a, a glass carboy, big, huge bottle. Mm -hmm. um, that process is called racking. It's basically okay. just moving the beer to another. Uh, but you don't have to do that. No, okay. you don't have to. Okay. A lot of people say it 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 um it kind of aerates the the, the beer. Mm -hmm. At that point it's not wort anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it's beer. It's beer. Uh that kind of aerates the beer and wakes up the yeast that's um that are floating around the uh, ones the ones that, the ones that didn't get to eat. <laughs> the ones that the fatties. <laughs> yeah, the fatties. That aren't through yet. <laughs> Uh, they're with, they're still in suspension, and and then whatever you kind of stirred up during right. racking are kind of reawakened. At that point, um, a lot of people dry hop, which is they add more hops to the beer mm -hmm. because it's um, it's no longer wort. They can add you know a few things. They can touch the beer. Mm, um, okay. It, if they leave it too long, it's going to get funky. But um, they can they can dry hop it. That's what what it's called. It's just adding a bunch of hops. Uh, to, the Sorry. word dry hump is going through your mind, <laughs> isn't it? I could not help it. I was I was trying not to lose it. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> um, that I'm, is that is dry hopping, not dry humping. Okay. <laughs> right. I'm getting too far into this. Um, ah, it's good. It's it's good info. I mean, well, I mean, like the the person who's never heard anything <clears throat> about brewing before is going to get overwhelmed and I think they got to do too much and, and get lost of it. I mean, I've heard of it, but I didn't know all of the steps. And, I mean, this is this is very uh, informative well, for me. Well, I'm glad. I mean, because I, I really didn't know how uh, how long you, how long this process actually took. You know, I'm thinking of wine or I'm thinking of Jim Beam and, you know, or 12-year, you know, uh, Jameson, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. It's like, well... We've got it in the barrels. In 12 years, we can we can sell it. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want to wait 12 years to drink my beer. <laughs> so could you imagine? No, we can't paint the house this year, honey. <laughs> in 2020. Yeah, 2020. 2020 is the year. That's it. As long as the place doesn't burn down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, um, bottling. You know, at the end of your fermentation, you are ready to package your beer mm -hmm. in bottles or in kegs or in growlers or in whatever you want to keep it in. Okay. Um, whatever it is needs to be clean. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, Mr. Beer Kit comes with plastic bottles, like pet plastic bottles, like um, hmm. the 20-ounce Mountain Dews, mm -hmm. that type of bottle. And you can use, you can reuse soda bottles as long as they hold pressure and they are clean. You can reuse soda bottles if you want. That seems a little cheap. Seems strange, yeah. Yeah. I've never done it, but that's uh, that's what I've heard. Um, oh, hang on. Growlers. Growlers. What? What's a growler? A Chat big room. bottle. A big bottle. You you said you bought or you were able to buy um, beer and milk jug. Yep. Yeah. A growler is a, simply a, a larger glass vessel. Um, 32 to 64 ounces large. You've usually got a, um, I wish I had a photo of one. Usually got a little eye handle at, mm -hmm. the, at the spout. And the spout is at, you know, the top. And it's just a. I know a exactly. Big, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I've, I bet you I got something in the refrigerator. I've bought beer in growlers. I sat down at dinner. I'll go through that story later. Okay. That's in, that's in my notes. <laughs> but once you started describing it, I knew exactly what yeah. it was because and Lee makes her, uh, <clears throat> she makes what she calls her rit her witch's brew, mm -hmm. which is um, she boils up onion and honey and all kinds of stuff as a decongestant. Okay, I'm and this got to be wintertime. Yeah, well, it, it's it's for cold. <laughs> hmm. And what she pours it in is it's a glass that's shaped kind of like this. Mm -hmm. It comes up and has got the little eyelet. Uh-huh. And a lid. That's a growler. Okay. Sounds like. Yeah. I'll show it to you after we do the show, but I think that, that's probably what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Cool. 
And uh, nowadays, uh, they just changed the law in Georgia, I want to say last month. I'm not sure when the law was changed, but last month, at least two um, growler stores opened in the Atlanta area. Or one opened and one announced. It would be in Atlanta. Yeah, I know. We're kind of we're in the minority. <laughs> I'm in the minority of beer drinkers. I am trying to get there. We're informing the public. That's right. Craft beer. That's it. American jobs. Yes. American ingenuity. We're we're starting a brewery. What? <laughs> That's the first show. <laughs> Shh. Uh, okay, so we got bottling. Or I see in the Bottling and kegging. kegging. So uh at this at that point. Um, you have two options: natural carbonation, because <clears throat> at this, you know, the, the beer doesn't come out all carbonated and fizzy out of the fermenter. Mm-hmm. It takes pressure to do that. Mm-hmm. And so, when we bottle our beer, if the typical home brewer without the carbonation equipment has um, has to add a little bit more sugar and maybe a little bit more yeast. It depends on who you talk to mm-hmm. uh, to each bottle. As they bottle it, that's kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah, um, but it's worth it. You know, you don't want flat beer. No, no. And what this does? I had of that course, two weeks ago. Of course, there's yeast still in suspension mm-hmm. in the beer because it's not filtered and and pasteurized and all that stuff. Right. As you bottle it, you're once again aerating it mm-hmm. because it it touches air and and it. Um, the yeast in suspension, the fatties wake up again and start eating. <laughs> Those damn fatties. But you've capped that bottle, it's sealed airtight, and the yeast begins to produce, um, to consume the sugar. Okay. Uh, and I said there's more than one byproduct of um, yeast consuming sugar. Carbonation. CO2. CO2, yeah. yep. And that CO2 obviously cannot escape the bottle. So it's going to... So it... Yep. Stays in the beer, and that's what makes it fizzy. Nice. Um, yeah, because if if it didn't have the fizz, I would think I would, I'm drinking wine. Hmm. You know, and I'm not a big wine drinker. I'm not either. I tried. I bought a book on it. Yeah. Um, couldn't do it. I'm not snooty enough, I guess. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I have. Oh my God! I, my wallet isn't thick enough for that taste. I gotta, I gotta read this from the chat room. So yeast, piss, and farts make beer. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure if it's like an excrement of yeast, or I don't know. I, you have to assume. I, you know what? I, all I can say is it's pretty damn good, whatever it is. It, it is, and the, it's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> so the final stage of this is enjoying enjoying the beer. You um, two more weeks in the bottle in a dark place. Oh, so you need to leave it two more weeks in yes, the bottle. Yes, it's got to have time to do its last little hoorah. Yeah, let the fatties get their their mm-hmm. feel. So you're talking a. You have a brew day, which is at least half a day, mm-hmm. and and <laughs> <laughs> hey, byproduct, byproduct of drinking. Um, it's at least a month until you're drinking, okay, and sharing. All right, so if I want any beer for craft beer, home brewed beer mm-hmm. for the Fourth of July, I better start on this in June first. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. You could probably you could probably get away with May, and let it bottle condition and and let it get really settled and make mm-hmm. sure it's done. But yeah, you can drink it at two at two weeks in the fermenter, two weeks in the bottle. You're you're pretty much any set. any benefit for allowing it to let's say you don't you you leave it in the bottle three four months and drink it. You probably don't want to go past three months. Okay, uh, the beer is not pasteurized. Gotcha. So now is Things this will start to grow. Is this pasteurized? I don't know. I mean, I, I honestly I, don't know. I drank um, that bottle that was almost five years old, and you're it was still alive. You're good. I'm, I'm alive, and it it definitely didn't taste as good as this. It was flat, but mm-hmm. I could definitely still taste the hops. And but a, a non pasteurized beer probably should be um, consumed within three to four months. Okay. Um, most 
microbreweries have dates on their bottles. Mm -hmm. For some reason, the Arrogant Bastard doesn't. We looked on the five-year-old bottle, and we looked on the brand-new one. Yep. No dates. Um, I do know that Sweetwater Brew in Atlanta dates their bottles, and they do not pasteurize their beer, which tells us that, um, which you can assume from that, that they don't distribute very far. They cannot afford for their beer to sit yeah. in warehouses and wait to go into stores. I tried, I tried Sweetwater here at a restaurant that is no longer open. That has no bearing on the fact that they had sweet water. But I was there with a, a, a couple of friends and <clears throat> someone who I would consider a, a, a beer aficionado, mm -hmm. good friend of mine that lives in uh, North Carolina. And uh, I'd, I'd never heard of it. And uh, I was drinking a Guinness, and he was drinking sweet water. And he was like, here, try it. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty damn good. So... I knew I, I know that you could get it down here as far as that one particular restaurant carried mm -hmm. it, but there again, that restaurant's no longer open. So, yeah, and that was likely Sweetwater 420. I think it was. That, it was a, uh, that does ring a, a bell. That's an extra pale ale, and it's really good when it's fresh. Yeah, it's not good when it's not fresh. I, it, yeah, in in contrast to my Guinness and what was in his glass, mm -hmm. my Guinness looked like mud. Oh yeah, and his looked like you know angel light was coming through it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. But not as good as the Guinness. I like the Guinness. Hey, everyone, each to his own, you know. it's As long as you're enjoying your beer and not drinking it because some multi-million dollar ad <laughs> campaign told you it would give you more sex appeal. I don't drink any alcohol because of that. My Hey, look, my my liquor of choice... I'm, I'm not, probably going to laugh. I'm not taking a sip right now. No, no, no. I started to say other than my tongue, but <laughs> but is uh, is actually potato vodka, blue ice, matter of fact. Mm -hmm. I don't so, think I've ever had that. Yeah. I'm not a big vodka guy. I love vodka, and uh, and, and it is a um, – it is comparison to, say, Sky or um, – uh, crap, I just forgot the big one. Smirnoff? Smirnoff. It is. It is a very. It has a very good taste. Um, even Lee, who's not a big, big vodka drinker, my mm -hmm. wife, she tasted it and she's like, "This, this is actually good vodka, and it's potato vodka." And as opposed to, I thought all vodka. I thought potatoes was what made vodka. Mm -mm. It must be the process. Oh. Okay. Vod vodka is normally made out of, uh, and I'm not going to say it without looking it up. But potato vodka is 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 a. Uh, is it, is is almost like craft beer. Okay. It's it's unique. There's very few manufacturers that actually make it. Blue Ice is one. Well, that's the name of it. I, I think it's the Blue Ice company, but hmm. anyway, I'm not educated <clears throat> on uh, vodka. Hey, this could be the Ben on beer and and uh liquor <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, it, the reason I became um a scotch snob is well, one I was trying whiskey and scotch Oh my God! Scotch became my favorite. Was I read? Uh, there's a there's a whiskey called 1792. Mm -hmm. It's not 1492. That would be too obvious. <laughs> I think it's 1792, and it turns out it's one of those big bourbon um, Kentucky whiskey places. Mm -hmm. But they had a full page ad in the Wall Street Journal, and it talked about what whiskey was. And as soon as I read that whiskey is distilled beer. I was hooked. I was like, I have to try this. What? Whiskey is made through the same exact processes up to... Um, well, whiskey is not bottled. They make the wort. They ferment it. I've seen that. At that point, beer goes off to be beer. Yeah. Whiskey is simply the product of distilling that wort. Or distilling that beer, rather. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I've I've seen them and, make, do the process of making yeah. uh, Jack Daniels, and yeah. Jim Beam. It's I had no idea yeah. that that's actually oh it's uh, you know the it's not carbonated or, not or anything. So no, it's yeah. not carbonated. It's just made and then distilled. Yep. Like, why don't I like whiskey? I was like, oh, I found out that's why. I don't like the the redneck whiskey. I can't stand I, scotch. 
It's too damn bitter. I, I love it. I it don't is, know why. It is too bitter. It is. I can't buy it. You can't buy it. Yeah, because I'm I'm a snob now. It's seventy. Oh God, you seventy probably, bucks a bottle. You probably. What do you do, go for? Blue label, black label? No, I my I have I have had a uh, gift set of uh, ye- red, yellow, black, mm-hmm. red, and did I say red already? Yeah, red. It's red, Four black. Four or five. I think blue is like the cheap. the top one. It no gold mm. is. No, it's not. You sure? Look it up. <laughs> Oh God! Here Blue we... is the hundred and forty dollar a bottle. No, I, I'm not going to stop talking while you. No, go ahead. It. Blue label is the top. Um, I don't want to say red is the lower. This is a beer show. Yeah, we're talking. We're talking specifically <laughs> Johnny Walker, right? Johnny Walker, yeah. Yeah. Um, Glenn Livett. And um, there's another one that starts with a G that I like. Uh, yeah, I mean. So, but I, I, I appreciate Irish whiskey. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. Blue, I see. Johnny Walker swing. Red label, 80 proof. Black label, 80 proof. Double black label. Green label. Gold label. Platinum label. Blue label, Johnny Walker's Premium 80 Proof Blend, aged 25 years. That's why it's more expensive. Yeah, it's aged 25 years. Okay. Yeah, because uh, gold, let's see, platinum is aged 18, but it's released for the Asian market. Gold, uh, eh, 15 to 18. Green, I've never seen green. Black label is 12. Red label is it doesn't say. Apparently it's just made and tossed out the door. No. It's a minimum three years to qualify as scotch. Okay. <laughs> I, I think, hey, I'll I go think for that's it. in the law. I'll I'll go for it. <laughs> I'll but go for it. It's not scotch. It. Scotch is a minimum three years age. Anyways. Red label has been reported to be former US Vice President Dick Cheney's drink of choice. What? Yeah. So there you that go. That much money? Red label? Red label, yeah. Yeah, okay. I guess he dips from the low end. <laughs> All right. Okay, back to beer. Um, How the hell did we get in on scotch? I don't know. We'll uh, have to rewind it and see. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I started talking about vodka and potato vodka. So oh, there you go. yes, yes. Um, so the end of uh, the brewing is enjoying and yep. sharing. Sharing. Sharing is caring. There you go. Um, so that's about it as far as my spew of the brewing process. I don't. It's hey, I, don't I have many more. I mean, there's a whole lot more details to add, but well, yeah, only if you want to add them. Yeah. Um, and we don't want this to be a three-hour show. <laughs> uh, if you want to know more, uh, Charlie Papajan is the uh, head of the American Craft Brewers. If I'm right about that, I. There's actually an association. Yes. Oh, cool. American Craft Brewers. No, the American Home Brewers Association. Okay, okay. He's the head of that, and he has written a book. I want to say he wrote it 30 years ago, and he's he's written several different versions since then. It's called The Complete Joy of Home Brewing, and that pretty much covers every aspect of home brewing. It's cheap, the paperback. It's probably available in the Kindle store and... Um, through other uh, formats, but... What's it called? The Complete Joy of Home Brewing. You could probably just type in Home Brewing to Amazon and find it. That's the top result there. Yeah, there we go. It's a um, <laughs> good book. Um, it, it There's few pictures in it, but... I know, because I know this country likes to read books with pictures. <laughs> uh, but if you want to know any other detail about the brewing process and some of the science behind it, that's the book. That's the that's been called the Home Brewers Bible, the go-to reference. So nice. Hey, there you go. That's uh, that's 
I mean, I don't go to that book all the time. I go yeah, to the recipe, but, it, but but it's a good one. Yeah, if I want to go back and you know, oh, why does that do that again, or or what exactly is the is it is it the yeast's pee or the poop? <laughs> <laughs> that book will probably tell you. And of course, if you want to buy the book, we'll we'll put it in the show notes, and you know, we'll have our little Amazon link there, so we'll get a little bit of something something <laughs> off of it. Yep. Buy it through the link. Yeah, buy it through the link. Um, no shame in that one, anyway. No, nah, you know, shameless plug. Hey, what can we say? <laughs> Charlie doesn't mind. No, I mean, hey, he gets a little something, we get a little something. <laughs> there you go. All right, I guess we need to move on to news. All right, so what do we got? Um, Oscar Blues is finally distributed in Alabama. Now, I don't think anyone listening knows what I'm talking about. I had no clue. Um, have you ever been into a reputable package store and seen Dale's Pale Ale in a can? It's red and blue. No. Okay. Anyway, that can I was gonna is say, from... But then again, have I ever been in a reputable <laughs> package store? The, At one time, you have to have. The package store that I go to, which I would consider reputable because I like the guy who, who owns it, mm-hmm. happens to be down at the Berrien County line because Tiff County is dry. Yeah. All right. The only beer he, he sells is Budweiser, Michelob Ultra, and maybe some of that because he's a liquor store. Yeah. So, anyway. I guess. All right. So, Dale's Pale Ale, you may or may not have heard of it, is from Oscar Blues Brewing Company in Lyons, Colorado which is, I think, in the Denver or Longmont area. It's on it's on I-25. <laughs> <laughs> For those of us not in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably driven by it several times, never knew it was there. Um, wasn't a connoisseur at that point. Yeah. Um, but these guys are from Alabama. The brewery, Oscar Blues... Oscar and Blues were two hunting dogs they used as kids. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, And so they ended up in Colorado on a road trip and now have a 50-acre farm out there. They um, use the byproducts from the brewery to um, that go, they go back into the farm. Mm-hmm. The farm raises grass-fed beef, which is served in the restaurant. Okay. It's a kind of a sustainable system they have yeah. in there. It's really neat. That's not part of the story, but it's interesting <laughs> nonetheless. <laughs> okay. Uh, the fact that these guys are from Alabama and, ha- and their beer's never been sold in Alabama. <laughs> in Alabama. <laughs> uh, they yeah. Were, they were born and raised there, I guess, and um, uh, for some reason, something in the law, in the state law, would not allow that beer. In. It hmm. could be the content. It could be you're not from around here yeah. kind of thing. I'm not sure what wasn't allowing them in the state, but once the law finally got changed, Oscar Blues was already at capacity. They were selling every drop they were making. And uh, somehow they've either increased capacity or the markets have changed, and they're finally mm-hmm. um, selling in Alabama. So, I just found that story interesting. So you've had some of this? I may have. Oh, okay. But you you don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I know where I can get some. That'll be interesting. Um, but I'm I'm wanting to try Dale's Pale Ale. Dale's Pale Ale was uh, rated by the New York Times as America's best pale ale at one time. I don't know when that was, but they are proud of it. And <laughs> Probably before Samuel Adams right, came so. on the scene. Also, another trivia fact... In 2002, they became the first craft brewer to put craft beer in a can. So this is the one that you were telling me about, that you can only get Dale's Pale Ale in a can. I think you can only get Dale's Pale Ale in a can, but no, the one you can only get in a can that I was talking about yesterday was Shift. Shift, okay. Also a pale ale, strangely, Mm. Uh, from New Belgium Brewing Company. Fort Collins, Colorado. <laughs> hint, hint. We need a sponsor. <laughs> ah, they're way too big now. No, they're number two. Really? In the States. Really? Number two. Wait. Number three. Don't shortchange them now. Cheers. <laughs> I, they're number three. Uh, number one craft brewer is 
Boston Beer Company, Samuel Adams, mm-hmm. and all of that. Number two, I believe, is Sierra Nevada. They're in California. Weird. Sierra Nevada is in California. <clears throat> hmm. Interesting trend I noticed. Um, Sierra Nevada is opening a second brewery location near Asheville, North Carolina. New Belgium is also announced in February, I think it was February, that they are opening a new location in Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, matter of fact, that that good friend of mine sent mm-hmm. me photos of where it's actually going to be located. I which have is, those photos, but I want to get more. Yeah. I want to get the satellite imagery from. It currently looks it. like it used to be a hog farm or something. But yeah, it was some, it looks like a farmers market. Or yeah, something. yeah. But crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oscar Blues has announced that they are making a uh, second East Coast brewing facility. Let me guess. Not in Asheville, oh. but in North Carolina. In North Carolina. Down the road from Asheville. <laughs> 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 I forget the name of the town, but I'm seeing a trend here. Well, I can I can give you this. For all the screwed up crap that North Carolina does legally, <laughs> kudos for them for having breweries. Hey, you can't fault them for, for hating beer. No, you, no. Like, Asheville is beer town USA. Yeah. Uh, North Carolina as far as the East Coast is concerned, mm-hmm. is the place for craft beer. Nice. It is. I don't know what about the laws. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but they <laughs> they support craft brewing, and uh, I like them for it. There you go. What's next? Oh. <laughs> you got the notes. I know I got the notes, but I keep going way off in the distance. And we're, we, we're, we're talking about Mississippi. Mississippi allows better beer into the state. Uh, effective July 1st at midnight, they uh, are allowing up to 10% alcohol by volume beers, which allows at least 75 more beers. Uh, and I'm thinking that's 75 beers from breweries, breweries that are distributed in Mississippi mm-hmm. that cannot distribute a section of their product. Okay. So I'm guessing that 75 number comes from right the breweries that distribute in Mississippi. Uh, so they, they the law got changed and people got excited. Everybody was stoked about it. There were midnight parties, um, but they could not get the trucks across the state line until midnight. <laughs> and I was waiting. I, I was waiting I for a bud. <laughs> they, they they couldn't get the trucks across the line until midnight. Or they could not pour a glass until midnight. I'm not sure right. what part that was, but um, people stayed up late and or got up early to <laughs> celebrate <laughs> celebrate the uh, the change in law. And Woo-hoo! <laughs> I get to drink this beer now. <laughs> Sunday morning breakfast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but the beer was distributed uh, in haste to um, select bars for mm-hmm. the celebration otherwise you know they were saying you you're not going to see it in the store until eh, today today so um thank you to mississippi for allowing that we need to start pushing for 15 percent so you can get some of the dogfish head brews that now this that surpass that 10 percent mark this arrogant bastard is uh 7.2 Okay, so it's allowed. It was already allowed. I want to say it wasn't, but okay. I'm not sure what the limit by volume. But it was. would be now. It would be now. Okay. Um, most things from Stone Brewing are are heavy and and mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and, uh, and delicious content. <laughs> <laughs> and very delicious. Um, the breweries that were celebrating were pushing beer into the state. Where a bre- uh, Abita Brewing, they're in. Uh, they make a really good pale ale, but uh, they're out of uh, Louisiana. Uh, Yazoo, something I've never heard of, from Tennessee. Isn't that a lawnmower? Yazoo. <laughs> I thought that was a musical instrument. <laughs> Maybe that's it. <laughs> I thought it was a kazoo. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Anyways, not going to talk about them. They probably make a pretty good product. Yeah. I've just never seen them in Georgia. Why not? I know. Hint, hint. Hint, yes. Come to Georgia. And uh, something else I've never heard of, Lazy Magnolia. 
um, their Mississippi-based brewery. I'm sorry, but that sounds like a chick flick. It's funny that Lazy Magnolia is based in Mississippi and had higher content beers available. But couldn't sell them there. They couldn't sell them in Mississippi. What's well, like, uh, is it the Jack Daniels Brewery or uh, Distillery? Yeah, yeah. They can, they can make it all they want. They can't sell it in that county. Well, they also get heavily taxed, I think, so. Well, yeah. But anyway, they, um, they, they get an extra tax. They plan to send uh, trucks to distributors after midnight Sunday morning uh, to get the new beers to certain venues for celebrations on Sunday. And I, I just said that, but I felt like I should read it directly from the notes. Yeah. So this this was this past Sunday. Yep. This yep. was two days ago. Okay, cool. Which is uh, pretty neat. And and I'm really glad that M- Mississippi is, has joined the, the real 1980s. World? <laughs> yeah. Um, it, and I wrote here, I'm going to have to read because I'm, I'm a little hazy. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote in my notes, these kinds of laws are terrible for our economy. Do you know how much money they were missing out? Because parties, wedding parties and, and celebrations and things, you know, this, uh, this, this one connoisseur that lived in Mississippi said he was driving to Birmingham to get beer. Wow. And he was part of this movement that lobbied for the mm-hmm. the alcohol content raise, <laughs> and they they had to lobby for uh, five years. So, Two thousand seven, they were formed to Damn. try to do this. And I was like, five years it takes to to wake the old fuckers up. <laughs> I mean, what happens when five years? What is what is their problem? They don't see that they can create more jobs. They well, all they see is people get more drunk. Mm-hmm. But allowing more craft breweries, allowing uh, a more diverse market, that well, would hey, certainly drive more revenue. If they get drunker, then that means they'll probably get caught driving, which means which that tickets will raise the fines. Raise it's, the fines. I mean, win-win. it's it's a win-win. Win-win. I don't know. I I just have a huge problem. I I was a lot madder about this when I was writing my notes. But now I'm just <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> cheers. And uh, homebrewing is, is, last I heard, is still illegal in Alabama. I, that I don't understand. That doesn't make any sense. The federal, <clears throat> the feds have limits. It is 100 gallons of beer per person, per legal age person per year, with a limit of 200 gallons per household. That's what the federal. Oh, so we could we are. could we could we would meet the limit because you and your wife and me and my wife in our individual households that's a hundred per because yeah yeah so two hundred okay two hundred gallons per year per household if I'm making two hundred gallons a year and I'm drinking two hundred gallons a year you're I'd, gonna have to get a bigger office uh, yeah. <laughs> the studio is not going to, to yeah, work. <laughs> you're not going to fit in the studio anymore if you're drinking. Well, the the thing is, share it. Oh, yeah. I, I think I give more of my homebrew away than I, than I drink myself. Yeah. Well, that's then cool. Then there are those nights where uh, <laughs> I'm just loving it up. But <laughs> this is good to me. And uh, Georgia still is lagging in the... Uh, in the craft beer movement, you know, well, we have um, raised our allowance of um, alcohol by volume. Mm-hmm. We can get really strong beers in the state, which is really cool. Um, and some cities, I'd like to interject. Go ahead. Ashburn, being one of them, now sells alcohol on Sunday. Ashburn does. Yeah. That's not far. That's not far. I think they have to start. They they can't start until like twelve o'clock. Yeah, you I know, think that's how it is anyway. Bible thumpers, but no offense. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's... Well, I mean, that's how it is. I think it, probably in Atlanta they they likely don't open till noon anyway yeah. or one. Well, I looked at it like this. I mean, that's a concession I'm willing to make. I mean, if I need if I need beer on a Sunday, I don't really need it Sunday morning. I can wait until after lunch. Yeah. Typically, I'm stocked. Yeah, for the yeah. weekend. Well, that's at least that's been the argument of most folks. It's like if you're not prepared and stocking up on Saturday, then you just don't need to buy it on Sunday. Yeah, I think the 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 no. Well, I was get. 
on the spur of the moment trip to somewhere or um, something unforeseen that you want to, oh, man, I probably should take some beer. You can't get it. I don't have a spare 12 in the fridge. Yeah. Um, you can always drive to, drive to Remerton. Well, yeah, I yeah. guess. But at, at, those, at those points, it's kind of inconvenient when, yeah. I, oh, well, I meant to get it. But Oh, I know. But I think it more inconveniences the individuals who buy a 40 ounce at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but and, it, and not to get off on that tangent, but yeah. my my thing was I wanted the I wanted the state itself to allow it, and what they decided to do was we're going to let the individual counties and mm-hmm. cities do it. And I'm like, okay, now I just need to start pushing Tifton to get to, to, to stop get it on being the ballot. Yeah, yeah, to stop being down backwards, and you know, well, it, it's a it's a change of of yeah, I know everything. Really, for some reason, having a, a liquor store open on a Sunday or the beer section in the grocery store lit up on a Sunday is uh, somehow against some rule. That reminds me. I can't remember where it's at. Yeah, but Walmart is going to start carrying liquor in certain places. Liquor? Yeah, wow. I think that's right. I'll have to, I'll have to I'll, verify that I'll, with my wife. But. I, won't, uh, I won't be able to confirm that. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a... I'm not a Walmarter. Uh, you don't buy anything from Walmart, huh? Nope. That's a different not show. Not that I admit, by the way. That's a different show. Well, that place has a $75 exit fee. <laughs> uh, back to Georgia. Georgia. About, uh, has allowed the sale of beer in growlers. Now, we've talked about what a growler was. Mm-hmm. Um, at least one place I know is open now in Dunwoody. If you don't know where Dunwoody was, it's in the north side of Atlanta. Of course it is. Of course it is. So this uh, this place, I believe, only sells beer in package form in a growler. They have <clears throat> 20-something taps. I, I wish I could remember the name of the place, but I'd, I'd like to give them a plug here. But they shouldn't have any problem. They're at a really good intersection. Yeah, we may have to go up there. and uh, I will. <laughs> D- take some video. Now we need to go up. The Ben on Beer Show needs to go up there. We need to get we need to get a camera crew together. That's right. We need to go van. up there. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> ben on Beer on the side of it. <laughs> I can see it now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, thirty-two and sixty-four ounce uh, growlers of beer. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter which size you get. It's four ninety-nine for the growler itself. And then the beer is priced, you know, based on what you get. Based on what you get and how much. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I want to say the most expensive 64 ounce growler of beer is sixteen dollars. And don't quote me on that. Don't argue with them. And say Ben said sixteen dollars. <laughs> oh, uh, because you know if Ben said it, it must be true. That's right. <laughs> Ask him for the Ben on beer discount. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they go the bit. Huh? What? Huh? <laughs> just do it after I show up. Yeah, that's uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a funny story about about growlers. My uh, f- first or second trip to a um, brew pub in Colorado Springs called Hops Brewery, which turned out to be a chain, a very small chain, but a chain nonetheless, mm-hmm. of brew pubs. And they had their uh, their lines of beer, but they're all made on location. Right. Uh, my favorite was a brown ale called Alligator Ale. <laughs> Alligator. I went with a friend, uh, had a good steak dinner, really nice. Um, you can see the, the fermenters behind the glass wall. You can just watch the brewery if you want. Hmm. Um, it's no longer there. I had breakfast the other, the other day. It's called uh, the, the Bear Lodge or something like that. What? It's, it's gone It's like now? a diner now. Oh, crap. Crazy. I say the other day, uh, three years ago. <laughs> the, the other day, three <laughs> years ago. Yeah. Uh, so my friend is more worldly than I am. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he's been, he went to college. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't hold that against him. <laughs> Uh, so my friend Scott, uh, at the end of the meal, you know, you have you could order dessert, you could do st- this and mm-hmm. that, you could get something to go. He ordered a growler of some beer, and I was like, "What did you order?" He's like, "I got a 
a growler of beer. I was like, huh. They bring it to and I'm like, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> they set it down and go, I want one. <laughs> so I ordered a growler of alligator ale. And it was, I don't know how much it was. I, that was 20s. Yeah. You know, I was rich in my 20s in the Army. And I, I took that home. And at any point, I could take that back into the brewery, mm-hmm. hand them the growler, and say, I want more of whatever your pale ale or yeah. whatever. And they'd take it and either give me a fresh growler or wash that one out, you know, sanitize it or whatever, and, mm-hmm. and fill it up with beer, seal it, and I'd walk out the door. It was awesome. Yeah. I, you you cannot get any fresher beer than that unless you drink on location at mm-hmm. a brew pub. Mm-hmm. And even then, you, well, yeah, you can't get any fresher than that. That's that's wow. brew at the source. That's just awesome. Okay, so this place this place up in in the Atlanta area, you can you do you can't do that or you can do that now. You can, but that's all you can do. You can't consume it on site. Yeah. Um, I don't think they serve food. They may serve other, other beers in mm-hmm. the in package form. Right. But they have a special license that allows them to package it on site. They have you know a, a, a row of taps mm-hmm. of you know rotating beers. I still I keep hitting that, don't I? <laughs> it's okay. I talk with my hands. <laughs> They have this row of rotating beers, and you just go and pick out, I want 64 of that or whatever and that. And, of course, it's returnable. Mm-hmm. You could reuse that growler, but you have, to, you have to at least buy it once. Or take an approved container in there. Right. Um, but they serve it out of, out of kegs, just like a keg at the bar in a glass. Mm-hmm. They just fill up a growler and seal it. Right. Nice. There. But the, they found some kind of loophole in the law. And they're going with it. It's good. Good for good them. Stuff. Good for them. Um, I do plan to get up there hopefully before the end of the summer and uh, maybe report. I'll have a growler to show on the show. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I may have four growlers. To show <laughs> <on the> show. <laughs> That'll um, work. So it's not limited to just one brewery or brew pub. That growler store, you can get... Something from Sweetwater, something from mm-hmm. uh, Colorado, something from Sierra Nevada, something you'd never heard of. Mm-hmm. It's really good. I, I'm I'm looking forward to the trip up there. Yeah, sounds and to sounds see how nice. they're doing. I, I I would assume that they're that people are beating down the door. Uh, I you, would be. Yeah. So yeah, me too. Um, but anyway, back to my hop story. Uh, I was down at the VA hospital in uh, Gainesville, Florida. Now, my original story was in Colorado. We've we're we're ten years later in Florida, <laughs> and uh, on my way home, I'm, I'm leaving the hospital, and I see hops. That logo, that sign, that restaurant. There's cars in the parking lot, and I I'm heading in, and I step up to the hostess, and I'm like, I want a growler of alligator ale, <laughs> and she goes, What? <laughs> 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 I'm like, can I get a growler of alligator ale? And she goes, What's a growler? We don't, we don't do that. I'm like, Wasn't this hops? <laughs> Is this hops brewery? Well, we don't, we don't do that. <sighs> so I drive home and I'm just pissed. It turns out. I come to discover the uh, the three tiers of <laughs> the federal government. <laughs> <laughs> a brewer must sell to a distributor, and the distributor sells to the retailer. That's mm-hmm. your three tiers. Mm-hmm. Brewer, distributor, retailer. Okay. And the retailer obviously sells it to... Consumer. Consumer. Now, the retailer could be a pub, a bar, rather, served by the drink, or... A uh, package store, selling it in package form. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's pretty much the law. Now, there's some loophole in Colorado that allows the brew pub to sell a the, growler of beer right. <clears throat> directly to the public, which I don't understand why they can't. If 
find that same loophole in the Georgia law. <laughs> <laughs> or the Florida law, for that matter. Yeah, wh- whichever state you happen uh, to yeah. be in. Wh- wouldn't it be so great? Uh, it's yeah. not like I'm going <laughs> to all the way home. I just wanted to have a, a nice half gallon in the fridge. Yeah. And, of course, you gotta you got to drink that in good time because it'll get flat. Well, it's yeah. like having an open beer. Yeah. But... Or a five-year-old so, arrogant bastard. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> and then I discovered the whole system, and I was like, oh, this sucks. You can probably only have tastings at the brewery when you go do a brewery tour. Mm-hmm. You can only do that. You can't purchase. Um, and then there's a, uh, a special thing called a brew pub where they brew it on site and they serve it on site. Right. They cannot package it at all. So can you have brew pubs here in Georgia? Yeah. But you keep, are, but they can't do growlers. There are th- four, <clears throat> I think, Okay. <laughs> distinct companies. Uh, five Seasons Brewing up in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another one in Atlanta, and I can't remember. I've been to it, but I can't remember the name of it. Uh, there's a brew pub in Columbus. It has a military theme, and I honestly cannot remember the name of it. Okay. And then there's... Uh, Moon River Brewing on Bay Street in Savannah. Hmm. I always thought it was, <laughs> I always thought it was a, a front. I never knew there was a brewery in there until I saw, <laughs> you know, the site and the brewing. And <laughs> I've never been in it. So you can go in there and you can, you can drink. You can drink all you want. But you can't get a growler. You can't take one outside. You can't take anything outside. <laughs> okay. And honestly, with this growler law change, they may be allowed to sell. As a, but they're not a package retailer. Mm. I don't know. That Maybe one's iffy. only package retailers can sell the growlers. Yeah, that one's iffy. I wish we knew. Yeah, I wish we knew. We may find out more information later on that. Um, but other than that, there's a uh, in in Savannah, the World of Beer. World of Beer is a uh, Florida-based chain of beer-themed restaurants, mm-hmm. and they reportedly have. I won't say reportedly. I will say rumored to have. 500 distinct beers. They're not all on tap, mm, but they okay. are. there are 500 different choices available as I far as beers. didn't that, realize there were 500 different types of beers, beers in the world. <laughs> Donovan, there are 1,700. No. I think there's over 2,000 craft brewers in the United okay, States. Okay, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I feel a little sheepish now. <laughs> Oregon's a good beer state, too, by the way. Oh, okay. I'm not moving there, but... Well, you could look for, you know, vacation no. places or... Yeah. If you happen to be motorcycling through the mountains around Portland. A, if I had a motorcycle. B, I went on vacation. Things change in life. Well, that's true. <laughs> you never know what the future holds. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> on your way to Redmond to interview for that job. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd have to turn that one down. A little geek joke, if you didn't get it. <laughs> um, but World of Beer has opened a location in Savannah. And I think um, this month, July, they are opening in Alexandria, Virginia. Not Alexandria. Arlington. Arlington. Virginia. Arlington. I only know that because I have a friend up there, and he was all excited about it. And I had no idea what he was talking about. And then I read there was one opening in Savannah before his is opening. So... <laughs> Uh, if you get that way, I'd probably wait a month or so because the crowd's probably going to be terrible. <laughs> probably. It's downtown in the historic district in Savannah, but I'm sure it's great. Yeah. They probably put uh, hmm, five, six million dollars in there. Mm. I'm mm, just mm, guessing. Mm. Restaurants are expensive, especially in the historic <clears throat> district. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. You got to pay off everybody to screw, screw up the history. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a photo from the inside of the place, and it was taken from what appeared to be either a balcony inside or a catwalk because the the ceilings are very high. Mm -hmm. Unless it was Spider-Man taking the picture. (laughs) Um, It was Peter Parker. But it seems to be a big place, but um, when that photo, that was opening night, that was full. Nice. Full. And my notes say, I plan to hit that up before summer is out. There you go. (laughs) That's what he plans on doing. But uh, that's the end of the show. I think that's the fifth time I've kicked the camera. Did you kick it again? I kicked it again. Oh, well.
I've become a little more comfortable with uh, the microphone. That's good. Trying to keep dead air from happening. Um, so are we getting close to the end of the show? I believe we are getting close to the end. I, I, I do want to end the show with a standard yet unique uh, message, which is not to abuse your alcohol. Uh, use the Wheaton will of the Wheaton rule of law. Yeah. Does everybody know what that is? Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Control yourself. Don't share with minors. Don't drink and drive. Don't be a dick. I'm Ben Rayberg. This has been the first wonderful episode of many of the Ben on Beer show. You can find me on Twitter at Ben on Beer. Uh, you can also find me on Untapped if you happen to know what that is. That's a social drinking. Drink responsibly. And um, that's about it. That's about it. You can follow the blog, uh, benonbeer.com, and subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. on iTunes. Just look for it. It's up under a narrow media. So That's, uh, we're going to call that one a wrap. That's it. That's it. We're See out of here. See you next time, folks. Bye. of the Anero Media Network. Your reality distorted.